Hello and I very warm welcome viewers. A very happy new year from Aris TV to all our viewers. You're watching discussion today with your host, Kruti Mishra. In the sixth round of talks with representatives of pharma organizations, the government had detailed discussions with the representatives on the Air Quality Management Ordinance 2020 and the Electricity Amendment Bill 2020. Union Agriculture Minister Narendra Singh Tomar said that the sixth round of talks between the center and the farmers protesting against the agriculture laws concluded on a very good note and there was consensus with farmer leaders on two out of four issues. The next meeting with farmers will be held on 4th of January. And to further discuss the issue and the way ahead, I'm joined by Mr. Sandeep Das, agriculture expert, and Mr. Ashok Dalwai, CEO, NRAA, Ministry of Agriculture and Farmers' Welfare. Welcome to Ratsabha Television, both of you. Mr. Namaskar. Dalwai, coming to you first. 50% resolution has been reached. The government accommodated few of the demands of the farmers. Now both sides have to move forward. Do you think that this stalemate will get over very soon? Thank you very much, Kriti. On the 30th of uh, December, as we are closing the year 2020, there has been a good news. The farmers' organizations and the government sat across the table and they tried their best to reach a consensus. What we see is that there has been an ice break opportunity that both of them utilized. As you rightly said, the agreement vis-a-vis -vis the Electricity Amendment Act 2020 and the Air Quality Management Ordinance 2020 have, uh, uh, have been a success. There is an agreement between the farmers and the government. Now, with this kind of initial success, the more intractable issues relating to the three agriculture marketing related issues, including the Essential Commodity Act, will be now taken up at the next meeting scheduled on 4th of January in the new year. Given that the minds have been opened and the protracted uh, uh, protest by the farmers has also uh, seen some kind of a uh, meltdown in the stand, it is indicative of the fact that they have now begun to believe what the government has been saying. They've begun to trust what the government has been committing itself. So I can foresee that even on the matter of the two amendment acts relating to two acts relating to the marketing and the third one relating to the Central Commodities Act, we would be able to reach a kind of consensus soon. The government has been very clear that we are willing to listen to the, the concerns of the farmers and the amendments required to these three acts will be carried out. And very specifically, the government had also highlighted what those issues are. And these issues highlighted by the government were based on, are, that they are based on the, uh, the, the discussions that we've had so far. The farmers, according to me, can now come back on 4th with deliberation among themselves. And if required, they can also consult the advocates to convince themselves that if we are able to effect the amendments, whether these new acts will serve their purpose or not. There is therefore enough opportunity uh, for the farmers to consult and come back with a sharper, uh, sharper discussion for a forum. And knowing that government is open, and that's what I think they're convinced based on the discussions that have been held between the two parties on uh, the 30th of uh, December. We certainly can uh, look forward to in the new year for a, a, a positive solution. And, uh, and then the government and the farmers together can actually start moving forward uh, to undertake the amendments that will be agreed to at this forum, at this discussion forum, and then uh, uh, we can actually roll out these, these acts in a, uh, with the purpose and vigor and enthusiasm that we would all like to uh, roll out in the interest of the farmers and the country at large. Thank all right, you. sir, very interesting points you're making there. And let me take that to Mr. Das. Mr. Das, the government has time and again allayed the concerns, assuaged all the worries of the farmers on MSP, on APMC. The government also said 
that it is ready to constitute a committee to address the concerns of the farmers on MSP on procurement. A resolution looks in sight, according to you? Yeah, because, because the agitation has been going on for almost like 35 days and more than 35 days now. Today is 36 days. And then uh, how long you continue to sit in the bitter cold and, you know, uh, and also farmers uh, uh, leaving their field and coming to protest. And government has been very proactive in terms of providing that written assurance of the minimum support price that that operation will continue. And farmers have been a little uh, adamant in terms of, you know, legalizing that MSP provision. And also the three, uh, as far as the two acts and the amendment is concerned. And uh, I think there is a breakthrough because government has agreed to form a committee to look at, I think the, the farmers organization, the 41 farmers organization who participated yesterday, in, in, uh, participated on the December 30th meeting, will be, will be, uh, will be the consulting their, their, their uh, they will consult among themselves to find, a, a find, find what is the way out. Because yesterday, I think it was ice breaking, and the way the the, the body language, the, the way they eat the food. I think uh, earlier rounds a little bit of aggressiveness from the farmers, and they, they refuse food served in the ministry, uh, the ministry officials, and all. Yesterday, uh, I think there is some ice breaking, and there are a lot of consultation is going on between the groups and the uh, government. I think January fourth, because 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 the, the response from the farmers group has been also positive. Government has already dropped two, two of their demands. They have accepted the two of the demands, uh, stable burning and, and the electricity, the proposed amendment to the Electricity Act. Uh, and I think, I, think the, so I think we'll get a resolution by, by, by the, in the new year, January 4th. And you must understand that you know, you know, farmers have to be looking after their agriculture activities. They are away from the agriculture activities for almost 35 days. So yes. that also is an issue to be raised. And uh, beside the extreme weather condition we are, we are witnessing in the northern India. So I think there is a ice breaking and the, the body language yesterday, uh, sorry, on December 30th on, 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 on the meeting was, was quite positive and, you know, and, and, and I think the solution is around the corner, I think, the new year. Right, sir, there were positive talks. But Mr. Dalvai, talking about MSP again, the government has said that it is ready to discuss all the issues have a dialogue with the farmers with open mind, it will also look at the legal provisions. I'd like to understand, can MSP be a legal right? Minimum support price is a right, is not a legal right. When I say it's a right, the very nature and the definition of minimum support price is that the government will come in to procure the agricultural commodities if the markets are not able to discover the prices at par with MSP. And as we all know, the government, since it adopted the new policy in MSP, whereby minimum 50% of the cost of production is added as the margin of profit, the MSPs have actually shot up compared to what they were before. The rise in MSP is good for the farmers, but simultaneously, when we compare the MSPs with the market prices, we suddenly see that there is a widening gap. Now, what the government is doing is having up upgraded the nature of MSP. Now, through the market reforms, it aims to uh, upgrade the quality of price discovery in the markets so that the gap between the MSP and the price discovery that happens in the market actually bridges. So we need to understand when people keep pointing out that there's a wide gap between the MSP and the price discovery, it is only because the, while the administered prices under the MSP system have been upgraded through a new policy, the markets were not reformed. Yes. And now with these three new provisions of law, the markets now get reformed. And we are confident that with two alternate channels like APMCs and the direct trade platform under the FPTC, the healthy competition will lead to better price discovery and the price discovery would be at least at par of uh, MSP or even more. And if it is below in certain areas, then naturally government will chip in. So I think both the farmers as well as everybody else concerned with the farming must understand that the the idea is not to procure per se. The idea should be to procure as less as possible by ensuring that the farmers are able to discover better prices. And I must say that government's vision is to 
transfer remunerative prices to the farmer through a competitive price discovery mechanism where it is above MSP. MSP is minimum support price. But we would like certainly the farmers to be imparted higher prices. How does that happen? It can happen two ways. When we keep on talking about surpluses in certain segments, it is locally a surplus production. But if we are able to transfer that surplus from a local production zone to a far range market, then there will be new demand, there will be better demand, and there are better price discovery. And now government, through the better agri-logistics, will be connecting the production zones across the country with the consumption zones across the country. Obviously, that will bring about more equilibrium between the demand and supply across the country, and farmers are bound to get better prices. And second, of course, is uh, to have a competition between two alternate channels. As long as we have one single channel, whether it is APMC or the FPTC, then there can be cartelization. When we have two systems competing with each other, certainly there will be a systemic improvement and better price discovery. I think that's what the farmers must realize. The people who understand agriculture, economics must understand, uh, must realize. The idea is not to transfer all the burden of MSP on the government. After all, government is whose? It belongs to everybody in the country. If we are able to save some money of the government through better price discovery in the markets, the same money will be utilized by the same government for investments in other sectors of the economy or to build better infrastructure within the agriculture sector. There's so much of a demand, there are different demands. So I think all of us together must understand that the money, there's a lot of competition on the same amount of money. There are alternate demands. We should try to allocate resources where it is best utilized, where it is best required. So I think the short point I would like to sum up by saying that we must have robust, healthy competitiveness in the agriculture market system so that it is the private players who are able to offer better prices to the farmers. And if the private sector is not able to offer better play, uh, prices, then the government automatically chips in uh, through the MS MSP mechanism. So we should try to reduce that particular burden. I think that's the appeal I would like to make uh, to the farmers. This is your money. When you say it's government money, it's actually your money. So let us see how to save that money and put it in other sectors of the economy, including agriculture sector, where we're able to get better returns on investment and keep improving the growth rates in agriculture. Thank you. All right, a very important right, point that you're making is about competitive, competitive prices. Mr. Das, the fulcrum of the entire discourse is realization of better prices. Now, it is said that these agricultural laws will pave way or facilitate interstate, intrastate, and provide better opportunities to the farmers. Tell us about the significance of one nation, one market for farmers. Essentially, what happened, you know, because of the APMC system prevailing, the farmers have been deprived from selling their commodities, uh, commodities across the country. Because suppose a person sitting in, suppose, Kerala wants to buy something in Haryana. So that 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 a lot of barriers in between. Basically. So that this electronic market system, the enum which government has launched, is try to do that. The alternative marketing channel, the act also talks about uh, alternative uh, marketing system, and basically the uh, the reduce uh, most of the FMC are monopoly mon monopolies on their own. The farmers have to bringing their produce to the uh, to, to to those FMC for sale. The act acts provides for creation of alternative markets. Which, which, which basically helps uh, price discovery you know, and and linking this uh, APMC, uh, the linking to the MSP regime is a is not not a, uh, is not desirable because because APM, uh, MSP is declared for only government declares for 23 commodities and government procures rice wheat for the National Food Security Act mostly to be distributed in the Food Security and also for for ensuring M MSP NAFED the the agriculture cooperatives procures oil seeds and pulses and, and also cotton corpus india intervenes when the, the when the cotton price go below M, go msp idea is to have a you must understand the fact that large quantity of major majority of commodities agriculture commodities are traded uh, traded uh, procured by processor or private sector yes. even now even now so that that has to be the, the, when we don't have a mar efficient market system it distorts the price basically and also the demand supply condition. So there are a lot of issues involved in that. This act, the act attempts to the first act uh, attempts to 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 create alternative markets. So the private sector invest 
in, invest in alternative marketing channel. And this also create competition and also who knows, APMC, APMC also start improving their, uh, providing better service to the farmers. So healthy competition occurs and, and it's an open market. And, uh, and also the, in a country like, if you look at agriculture and allied sector, large sector allied sector, like livestock and milk and uh, other stuff, fisheries, are outside the, any of the MSP regime. And they are mostly private sector driven. So where poultry is essentially private sector driven. So how to create an efficient market system? So this act provides for that. And linking MSP is not a not a viable solution. And it's, it cannot be a legal right because government can procure that much amount of uh, food gain for the social sector scheme. Government can't be intervening everywhere. Even, 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 even I always been an opinion that even cotton crops of India uh, 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 should not be intervening in the market. In a cotton is a commercial crop basically. So that sort of reform that this will bring and 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 also that the contact farming act also lead to better processing activities because in, in India processing has been comparatively low in the yes. other compared to other countries. The more the processing, the better the price relation with the farmers and the investment. Just imagine the person who export the commodity, the person who procure the commodity also would like to invest in seeds, in marketing, in the seeds and the quality of the produce. That's also going to, going to improve. Although farmers organizations have uh, have raised some some appearance about about dispute settlement, that government has still has already stated that they are willing to look at that. The dispute settlement in case of contract farming should, should, should be going to SDM in the current act. So the government has also said that they are looking at an alternative channel where, where where the disputes are settled properly. And there are a lot of other misconceptions where the land will be acquired. And the government has said it clearly that any private sector investment made in the contract farming cannot raise loan against the land. The, the, the party which procured the commodity cannot be raising loan against the land, basically. Those are the contradictions that are made. There are a lot of misconceptions and misinformation about uh, this act. But we need market reforms. Too, for too long, the market reform has been delayed in this country. And, and I think that, that the farmers' organizations have also realized, and I think January 4th will be, will be, we'll find a solution to this uh, crisis now. In fact, these agricultural reforms were advocated back in the year 2001 by the Shankarlal Guru Committee. But Mr. Dalvai, talking from a historical perspective, I'd like to understand, India has been producing surplus food grains for almost two decades now. But the income of farmers did not increase in the same ratio. What were the reasons and how will the new laws change the reality? Primarily, if we want to transfer good incomes to the farmers, they should be able to earn higher returns on the investments they make, which means that the positive net returns are important. That will happen provided the farmers are able to increase the production or the volume of production to higher productivity. Second, they raise their production by reducing the cost of production. And thirdly, which is the most important factor today, is to monetize all their marketable surpluses. What we find today is we need intervention to rationalize the input use efficient, the input use so that the total factor of productivity reduces, it becomes more efficient. And second is to enable the farmers to benefit from converting all their marketable surpluses into money. Yes. The two requirements for this are, first, the farmers are able to reach out their marketable surpluses to the place where it can be sold. Today, we're not able to sell only because there is no agri-logistics poor road condition, poor storage condition, poor packhouse condition, poor transportation condition. There may be a demand in Delhi for the produce of Bangalore, but if the farmer is not able to reach from Bangalore to Delhi, even if there's a high price there, it becomes a barren price for him. That is the first condition. The second one is that we need to integrate all the markets across the country so that the universe of traders increases. What has happened so far is that APMCs, which are regulated markets, have been set up under entry number 28 of the state list. That means the state's jurisdiction is boundarized by the state geography. They cannot legislate for areas outside that. While we make reforms to the APMCs, and we have already suggested reforms to the APLMC Model Act 2017, the efficiency still will be limited because we cannot connect the market of one state with the market of another. Exactly. We now need to take advantage of nation as a market. 
And if we want to do that, it is parliament alone can pass a legislation which can connect one market with another market across the state boundaries. So we must realize that when we do this thing, the farmers will be able to reach out to markets in the far range. And simultaneously, because of integration of markets across the state boundaries and provision for seamless transport, there will be better competition and better price discovery. So, so far, the growth rate has been good, but the growth rate of incomes has not been as good. Through the approach of doubling farmers' income, the government envisions to actually now monetize the agriculture credit surpluses. Yes. And this can be substantiated by the fact that a study by CIFET in 2015 showed that commodities worth Rs. 93,000 crore, sorry, 93 lakh crore, was wasted only because the farmer was not able to connect from the farm gate to the market. If only we can improve the agri-logistics, the farmer will be able to convert his produce into money. So the two important things that government is now doing is, first create one nation, one market, so that there's seamless transfer of commodities from farm gate to anywhere that there is a demand across the country. Second, provide an alternate channel to the APMCs so that there's a competition between the two systems and better price discovery. And apart from that, transparency through the electronic system of uh, trading. And of course, the, uh, the third one is to, uh, uh, to, to strengthen the farmers themselves so that they don't have to undergo distress sale. And that is being done by in increasing the institutional credit access to the farmers at both production stage and at the post-production stage through what is called electronic negotiable warehouse receipt system, ENWR. So I think that we have now realized what has been a challenge. We are finding an answer to that. So we certainly uh, must recognize that the best answer on uh, low-hanging fruits today lie in the post-harvest management. So yes. better agri-logistics, better processing, and better market. These are the three new interventions that are sought to be done through these new reforms, along with, of course, the new FDI policy where there is scope for building capital investment uh, by the corporate sector and uh, the, through the automatic route of 100% FDI and public sector investment through the agri-infrastructure fund and the corporate sector investment uh, through the policy uh, facilitation that is possible now through the new acts. So that has been the problem and we should therefore now look forward to. And many countries, including America, which had similar problems in 1980s and 1990s, have solved their problems only through market reforms, only also by diversifying from just pure food, fodder and feed into bioeconomy. So if we want agriculture of India to also diversify to bioeconomy, that means producing biofuels, biomaterials, bioenzymes, then we will substitute the, the food crops by non-food crops to the extent required after ensuring that we have the food security. And to that extent, we'll find better market opportunities. Right, I think that's the way forward. So two very important points that you made about agri-logistics and also about diversification. Mr. Das, closing comments from you on these two points. See, I must tell you that today, today the farmers, and uh, particularly the livestock farmers, today is a dairy. If you look at this, the dairy poultry, and the most perishable commodity, milk is a very perishable commodity. But because of the investment in the logistics and system, we have. Although there are issues in that system also, but but look at the way where our milk sector has grown. Look at the way our poultry sector has grown. <laughs> So that is investment in the, uh, the, the and 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 mind mind you the focus should be on now diversification especially the state like Punjab and uh, Punjab and Haryana because the most of the Punjab farmers who grow rice non basmati rice are actually we have other states contributing to the national uh, food, food gain uh, surplus like the, during the green revolution we had only Punjab Haryana Western UP used to produce enough quantity of rice and wheat. Our Punjab is not necessarily a rice wheat area because because both of Punjab, rice and wheat are the water water right. intensive crops. So that also leads to a lot of problems in that. Now that other states like Chhattisgarh, Odisha, uh, and and uh, Andhra Pradesh, Telangana is producing enough quantity of rice, 
the time is ripe for the in, to diversify. We, we, last couple of years, they talk about diversification. There are some farmers have diversified into livestock, into into allied sector. So, so that is, the, and this will save not only in terms of ecological importance, in terms of water. This will also 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 lead to better farm income because 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 how long FCI will continue to have an open-ended procurement system in exactly. in a place like Punjab and Haryana? The kind of food stock we have today is a huge amount of excess food stock. And, and so that, that's why the, 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 the comes that we need to manage our surpluses and only can, that can be managed to better market system, better logistics. And, and we need to invest a lot in logistics. And we have an example of, as I said before, an example of poultry and, and dairy and fisheries also, largely fisheries also. And these are all very income, uh, income generating activities for the farmers. So we must shift a bit from the cereal centric cultivation of like rice especially. So those are very important points made by our panelists. On that note, thank you so much for joining us and we do hope that a resolution is worked out in the new year. So that's all we had for you in this edition of discussion today. Thanks for watching and stay tuned to Rajasabha TV.